Um, our next speaker is uh, Nathan Helm, um, who describes himself as an MPI implementer at Los Alamos and an active participant in Open MPI. Um, again, I want to re relate this back to the work that we're doing in the OFIWG. We had a rather lengthy uh, series of sessions related to MPI requirements. And so what I asked the MPI community to do was to come here today and sort of summarize that at some e extremely high level of abstraction. Um, I think it took about five hours in the original go-around. We don't have that. We have a half an hour. But I wanted to bring this group up to speed about what, what this looks like from the MPI's perspective. So, Nathan? Yep. So, yes, yes. It, uh, from what I understand, it took uh, Jeff about five hours to get through this. Just going one-on-one -on -one with me, it took us about 45 minutes. So, it, this is going to be probably a little bit rushed, uh, but uh, so kind of hold off questions definitely to the end so that uh, you know, we can get through this. Uh, so this is going to be extremely high level. Um, you know, I'm not going to be able to really go into some of the details from uh, you know, Jeff's point of view. Uh, I'm an implementer, not uh, a hardware vendor. You know, I see the API from a different level than, than some of the others. Um, and this presentation is based off feedback from a lot of people in the MPI community. Uh, you know, huge number of people. And, you know, I think we should start kind of with a, a quick MPI overview here. Uh, you know, this, it's a high level abstraction API. There's, there's no concept of a connection from the MPI point of view. All communication is reliable. Uh, and uh, pure address is just a simple communicator uh, integer tuple. Uh, there's you know several communication modes. We have blocking and non-blocking, point to point, you know one-sided, two-sided. Async progression is uh, you know highly recommended. Not all MPIs, including OpenMPI, uh, support it. Um, message buffers are provided by the applications. There's nothing special about these buffers, and that's gonna Got it. The importance of that is going to come up a little bit later. Um, you know, the MPI specification is uh, governed by the MPI forum. Uh, we're at MPI 3.0 right now, working on MPI 3.1. Uh, you know, you know, there's some kind of MPI implementation software and hardware implementation um, uh, in the spec. Uh, some are open source, some are closed source. Uh, and we generally don't care about interoperability at this point. Uh, this is a large community. There's many different viewpoints, several large implementations, and a lot of vendor implementations. Uh, and we don't all agree with each other. And one example is we got two high-level camps here. We got those who would like to see a matched sort of layer, a network layer that handles tag matching for us, does a lot of the, the stuff that we do in software on other networks. Uh, you know, this is stuff like PSM, MXM. And then there are those of us who are kind of, I'm kind of fit into this camp a little bit, who want low level interfaces, uh, that we have direct access to the capabilities uh, so that we can you know, tinker around a bit more with you know, our implementation. Um, and and Jeff, Jeff is definitely on this side of the camp as well. Um, and, you know, he, he made it clear that, you know, be careful what you ask for. The MPI community is very involved, and we want to be involved throughout the design process. Um, and, you know, you, if you ask for something, you're going to get it. Uh, anyone who's been involved in the forum knows uh, how this community works. Um, and, you know... Some of the things that we are going to need, you know, we deal in messages, not streams. We want an efficient API. Uh, and we want uh, one side semantics, separation of local initiation, uh, asynchronous progress. Uh, we, we're kind of not sure what this looks like yet. Uh, it kind of would be nice if you have like a PGAS and an MPI. If you progress the PGAS handles, it'd be nice if the MPI handles got. You know, progress as well. We're not quite sure if that's what we want, but it's kind of along one of the views of what we might need. Uh, we need scalable communication with millions of peers. 
uh, right now, MPI is already running, you know, 3 million MPI processes for a job. Uh, and the yeah, best way to think of it is a fully connected model. Um, and right now, I mean, there's, you know, there's not, we don't totally dislike verbs. Verbs provides a lot of great things. Uh, it provides multiple modes of communication, UD and RC. Uh, we like RDMA write with immediate, though I got to say right now, you know, four bytes definitely isn't enough. We want more. Um, we want to be able to specify read and write address. Oh, well, we like being able to specify read and write address. That's, that's one of the great features of verbs. Uh, be, being able to reuse short buffers immediately is great. You know, scatter gather lists for sends really great because uh, MPI, our short messages, tend to be a header and the data. They're, they tend to be two different uh, addresses, and so that's great. Uh, atomic operations, we, we want more on that one as well. Um, and we like having multiple consumers in a single process uh, uh, as well. We, you know, lots of other great stuff, you know, not having collective initialization, don't require a specific wire protocol, you know, all great stuff. Uh, ability to connect unrelated peers, you know, same sort of thing. Um, and ability to block while waiting for completion is uh, also very important. And you know, Jeff made sure that, you know, I stress that, you know, it's really awesome that everything is cleaned up in process termination. I mean, that's, that's a great thing about verbs as well. Uh, but there are some, th some things we could see to improve this. And one of them is, you know, MP uh, MTU is not an int it, it, right now. I, and I know uh, Live Fabric has already addressed this. I think this is already kind of uh, fixed. Uh, being able to specify timeouts and connection requests, uh, all operations need to be non-blocking. And that includes address handle creation, memory registration, uh, and communication setup and teardown. Um, we want to be able to specify the buffer length as a function parameter instead of a struct. This is uh, extra memory accesses we don't necessarily want to pay for. Uh, ability to query how many credits are currently available in a queue pair. And we really don't like the concept of a queue pair in the first place. Having uh, multiple queue pairs just for one send receive channel is just, yeah, it, it's not uh, the way we like to do things. Uh, we want, and what would be a really great feature would be have uh, completion at the remote peer for RDMA write, uh, and have the ability to look up a loopback, whether loopback is supported on a particular device. Right now, the best we can do is try to set up a local queue pair and see what happens. Um, and we want a clear delineation about what functionality must be supported versus what is optional. Um, and you know, Verbs functionality is wildly different between different providers right now. Uh, so this would be you know, a great thing to have. Uh, better ability to determine cause of errors. This is one of the things that kind of came up is you know, a error node doesn't necessarily have the same meaning on different hardware. It'd be great to say what exactly that hardware uh, error is. Maybe it's something like a string error sort of functionality. Uh, uh, and some other things, and you know, I've complained about this, is standardization of high-level interfaces. And right now, we have two tag-matched interfaces. We have MXM and PSM, both essentially kind of solving the same problem. It'd be great if uh, Verbs had kind of standardized these sort of features. Uh, and you know, again, divided opinions in the MPI community. You know, some providers must support these. Uh, Providers must support these interfaces. If not implemented, that's you know more you know Brian Barrett sort of PSM MXM portal sort of view, and um, those like me that would like to be able to query it. We can work around it. We can, we think we can do better than software emulation. In other cases, uh, and um, we'd like direct access to vendor specific features. This is something that came from Jeff, considering he's a vendor. Uh, that allows them to extend, you know, all parts of the API. And I mean, a kind of idea here, uh, a simple example would be, you know, whether or not it's something that sits to the side of verbs, some vendor provided uh, extensions, 
or something that goes through the verbs inter uh, the live fabric core. Um, and you know this this one is kind of important. The, this goes back to the user provided buffers. Uh, we want to be able to uh, query stuff like is memory registration even necessary on this platform? If it's explicit, we need some sort of robust way to figure out when memory is uh, goes away, when it needs to be deregistered. Doesn't have to be. Uh, doesn't have to be UMM. You notify just something similar that we can get that kind of information right now. At least in OpenAPI, we use uh, PT malloc two to get that sort of notification. It's not necessarily the the optimal strategy. And you know, if the cost of registration deregistration were free, we wouldn't care. We just you know, we wouldn't keep a cache. So, um, fork behavior, we don't care if the child gets can communicate. We want the parent to be able to just keep going and doing what it's doing. The child, you know, we don't care. As long as the child, you know, runs, can it reinitialize the network, we don't care. Uh, it, it's very simple behavior. Um, so we want to um, kind of, sorry, I'm, this is my third time through these slides. Uh, we want to be able to do stuff like requesting unordered or uh, ordered delivery. Uh, that would be kind of a great thing right now. We just, it's just simple ordered and it'd be, there are, there are instances where we would like, where we can actually do something a little bit weaker like in one-sided code. Uh, and yeah, completions on both sides of remote write would be great. Um, and you know, this is one that I've complained about. Uh, yeah, the, the allow the listeners to specify like a specific address, like a port uh, in TCP land. Right now, a Q pair is just a random number. And so we have to pass around this number uh, between all the ranks. That's extra information we have to pass around, extra storage, in order to do something as simple as, say, connection set up right now. Because you know, we can form a QD, UDQ pair, but it's different everywhere. We need to know what it is. Uh, and you know, when you have millions of ranks, that's not necessarily something we'd like to have to uh, do. Um, we'd like to, you know, we want uh, to the layer, like fabric or whatever it is, to allow receiver uh, providers to consume buffers directly. And the idea here is, so if we post a buffer, a receive, we want, the, if the receive is four bytes and the buffer is a thousand bytes, we don't want that four bytes to consume the, the entire buffer. We want to be able to kind of break that um, because it's a huge waste. In OpenMPI, we actually have several different buffer sizes so that we don't waste that, that space. Um, we want generic completion types. Aggregate completions would be great if we're doing a, uh, a um, pipeline sort of send. We only care that all the sends have, have completed. We don't care about each and every send. Uh, Out-of-band messaging would be another great feature. Um, Non-contiguous sends, you know, we, don't care about, we don't care about page size. Uh, we don't want to have to worry about page sizes. We don't want to have to worry about alignment. Uh, Access to underlying performance counters. That, that one's really key. It'd be great if MPI could reach in and expose with MPI T, the MPI tools interface, actual hardware counters of what's going on. Um, and we want to be able to set and get the network uh, quality of service. Uh, you know, more atomic operations, but something a little bit more, more types. You know, if you can give us all the C types, that is amazing. That is exactly what we want. We want, if we got all the C types and this, the typical stuff like add, subtract, or XOR, et cetera, that's what we want. But it would be okay to have at least the standard int types and be able to get you know 32-bit, 64-bit, uh, and other sizes. And a runtime query to be able to figure out whether or not this is coherent on the host. Um, so, uh, you know, stuff. For RMA, we offset based uh, communication uh, would be very good because right now the, there's this notion in MPI of a dynamic window, a uh, dynamic RMA window where 
different segments can be attached to the window uh, on the receiver side. And the problem is, let's say with verbs, we have to pass around information, blocks of information for each registration. And that quickly becomes unscalable. Uh, and, you know, programmatic, programmatic support to discover if, v, if the virtual address is, uh, performs better or worse than offset base would be uh, another great feature. Uh, aggregate completions of get put and get operations. Uh, this would fit very well with MPI semantics. Um, so let's probably blow through that. This is uh, this last uh, bullet here. The the need for read and write only access for uh, regular users to kind of the fabric topology. Uh, this, uh, this would be a great feature to be able to have an MPI that actually can figure out the topology without having root privileges. Because right now, what's available requires root, and this makes it not very useful for uh, user apps. Uh, um, so again, you know, MPI frequently sends and receives with two buffers, a header and a payload. And we'd like to see optimization for that case. That's the important case to MPI. And you know, in, in some cases, we want thread safety. In other cases, we don't. Right now, it's always thread safe, but it'd be nice to be able to turn on and off that feature or weaken it. Uh, and support for checkpoint or restart is desirable and make it safe to close stale handles and reclaim resources. It, if we close a stale queue pair, we don't want an error. We just want it to be to, to work, to you know, silently work or fail. <laughs> Uh, do not, uh, you know, some of the API design considerations, do not assume uh, the max size of any transfer. Uh, the memory translation unit is not in the network, is not necessarily in the network hardware. This is something that Jeff ran into. They're using the, net, the translation hardware on the Intel processor. They don't have it on their hardware. Apparently, this didn't match well to verbs. Um, and be reliable as sockets. If a peer disappears, have well-defined failure semantics and have the ability to reclaim resources on the failure. Um, and so, you know, kind of concluding here, there are many different requirements here. Some of them are high level, like the, the like tag matching. This is something that that some MPI implementers want. Some of them are low level and vendor specific. Uh, and you know, it'd be nice to have an interface that can cater to both uh, groups. And we would like to community, uh, continue to collaborate. We would like uh, the, the involvement of the MPI community, now that you've asked for our help, is we want to be involved every step of the way. Um, so that's pretty much what we've got. So what would you do with the hardware counters if you had access to them? Uh, there's something that we could expose either to system administrators or to the application. So if the application's doing, getting horrible performance, being able to have them look at performance counters from the hardware and say, oh, I'm getting a bunch of timeouts or something on this, talking to this peer, whatever it ends up being. Uh, so you'd actually like, keep track of your performance and then well, the hard hit some threshold and grab the counter? Well, a lot of the hardware has counters right now, and I, there's just no good exposure mechanism for them. It just being able to say the two, that we know the application has it, we've got the MPI tools information interface, being able to say, okay, let's go look at that variable and see what's going on. Uh, that would be like a really great feature to have. So can you give an example of uh, how doing the topology, whether I, I know it's a 20 dollars or 50 dollars, how does the application go to make this? Well, it will cut. A, about the uh, the topology, the two uh, D torus or three D torus, how the application would make use of it. The way we make it, it would be, we want to make use of it in the MPI implementation. We might want to do, say, for collective operations, if we know the topology of the network, we can make use of that and maybe do something a little bit more optimized for what we're on top of. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the user. The user might take make use of it by creating a uh, a. a a graph topology on top of the underlying network topology. Uh, so there are applications there. They may say, oh, 
give me a disk graph that represents the, the underlying network and then do nearest neighbor communication on that and it's nearest neighbor on the network as well. So on the counter, it's pretty interesting. Um, so congestion management and particular flows, um, sometimes there's you know, multiple uh, interfaces that you can use to get to a host or LMC, you have different routes within the same fabric. So do you think you would be able to take advantage of any or all of that um, within uh, the messaging framework Oh yeah, that would be another great place where maybe some sort of performance counters and metrics because right now uh, the way we deal with multiple paths is we round robin them. Uh, if you have two network cards and two paths to a host, we'll just go between them. Uh, we're, we're not right now aware of what's going on in those networks. So if one ends up being really slow, we don't adjust, and that would be a great feature to be able to to do to have. Stephen, yeah, posting the statistics on per host flows would be useful for us on the system side. That's difficult for us to even investigate what's going on. Uh, you know, yeah. Who's talking to whom and where, uh, where we're getting uh, back pressure. Yeah, and, and th yeah, that would be great to be able to expose. And MPI, the MPI tools and information interface is a great way to be able to do that. It is possible to get a big array and say, what is my statistics to each peer? Uh, and that sort of information would be uh, very useful to have, both from you know, the system's perspective and also from the, uh, the application perspective to figure out what to, what's better. Okay. Do you have any ideas on how you might like topology information communicated? No, not not at the minute moment. That's <laughs> I mean, you, you mentioned a graph, but but to get back to Sean's point of having lots and lots of data, and you know, so I mean, that's that could potentially be a lot of data that you make, you know. So yeah, and, and this is something that you know the MPI. I I think there's a there's not really good understanding of what it should look like yet. Oh, we just know that it would be great if we had access to it. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some discussion back and forth between the MPI community and the, you know, the, the LibFabric community to figure out what this should be. So, but we do want to have that discussion.